2018 Magic. Andrew Dixon sent off, seven minutes into the second half last week, Liam Kay, Josh McCrone and Darcy Lussick all sin bin. But, with the exception of Lussick who is injured, they're all here tonight. So, away we go. And uh, the players will be sheltering their eyes from the sunshine, which is streaming down from an absolutely cloudless sky here above St. James's Park. And it's the Toulouse Olympic side, second in the table, who have the first use of the football. Conditioned perfect as well there, Eddie, as Toulouse look to shift the ball. They have got a very dangerous left, left edge. They will look to predominantly play that down that side. Jonathan Ford who's the number six, he is the key man for Toulouse. All the players come oh. through him. Ash is the dummy half, and he gets it away to William Bartow, formerly with the Catalan Dragons, five years there. Okay. Good kick downfield, collected on his own 20-metre line by Stand Gareth O'Brien. And now let's see exactly what Go. the Toronto Wolf Pack can do. Some big money has been spent already on getting them into Super League next year. They believe what a remarkable run it would be if they get into the big time. They will have reached Super League after just three years of existence. And you never know, this could well be a rehearsal for the million pound game or even better come the end of the campaign. They might, both of them, they might both of them get into Super League and we'll certainly be seeing a lot of these two sides I fancy during the course of the qualifying campaign it's a high kick and it's knocked down nicely and the ball bouncing everywhere and they keep it alive this is Corey Patterson gets it wide and I think this is going to be the first try of the match no he has disallowed it as referee Scott Nikolauskas well Liam Kerr a lot of people outside of Super League said just how good he is and look at the back three for this Toronto yeah. side in Gareth O'Brien, well. Matty Russell, Liam Kerr. When they well. do get the ball, they do like to shift it well. to the edge. They give the ball to Liam Kerr just as he's yeah. going over, trying to ground that ball. He loses possession. And a great decision by Zero. Scott Miklauskas, who uh, has to make the decisions on his own today. No video referees. No video referee decisions here today in this first match because it is in the Betfred Championship. Hold. A great try saving oh, tackle, I think, very, very early on. We know about Toronto's attacking price. You could see the quickness of thought there to get the ball to that left edge. Great dislodging tackle in that right corner to prevent Lee and Kay from scoring. Kouache is very dangerous. French international way back in 2015. And uh, Toulouse Olympique get the first penalty of the match. Well, whenever you play rugby league, whether it be in the championship or the Super League, you just need to make sure you keep on getting forward, try and get the one-on-one -on -one tackles. Kouache does exactly that. Finds a little half gap and then the penalty ensues then from Bob okay. Bezic. Good right. field position here for Toulouse. Indeed so. And look out for Jonathan Ford, who is wearing number six. One. International. He Hold. is the playmaker. He's the go-to man one. for Toulouse. And it's with him now. And he gets the Two. pass away. Move. And uh, good work from Reese Curran. Rash again. Ford. Bullets the pass, it's a chance here for Adair. Play on. Play on. But they've lost the ball, and Stay Gareth O'Brien comes away with Stand. it for the Toronto Hold. Rule Pack. That's going to be a good battle Hold. over on the left-hand side Andrew with Ten. Toulouse. Adair against Stan uh, Chase Stanley. Go two two. big centres who do like to attack, wingers centres who like to promote the ball as well at every opportunity. Well, that's a good hit, but it was uh, not a tackle that was completed. And so that meant that Greg Worthington is able to bring the ball away for the Toronto Wolf Pack. One thing you can say about these two sides, I did have a, a little look at them at the uh, Easter weekend match between these two sides. They both love to play football. They love to push the ball out wide. It's not necessarily straight down the middle stuff. Here's Corey Patterson again. Of course, we don't need much introduction as far as he is concerned. Hulkingston Rovers and Salford formerly. McCrone gets a short ball away, but it's spilled again, and Planas picks it up. But now they've got the ball back, and here goes Liam Kay, and Liam Kay gets over for the first try. No video referee, as I say. The two touch judges are in position. This is going to be given. It is. First try of the match to Liam Kay. The top try scorer this year. Liam Kay, 17 now for 2018.
and it was Liam Kay that finished. He almost finished a couple of minutes ago in the corner, denied by a despairing tackle. This time, though, this is where it started. Smart play by Josh McCrone to go down the short side. He, the ball goes to ground, and, he's, and it's a one-on-one -on -one strip, so that's play on that smart play twice. In one play, Liam Kay doesn't need a second invitation. He scores the first try, but it all started by the overcall from McCrone to go down the short side. Sticks Worthing to do the gap, ball goes to ground, play on here, one-on-one -on -one steal. And Scott Michalowskis, I think that's you know, a, a great piece of refereeing from him, allowing these players to play on, and Liam Kay, well, he gets the scoreboard going. Well, we have no video referee, we have better than that. We have Stuart <laughs> Cummings. Well, the key to that is that the ball-carrying arm, or the ball itself, never ever touched the ground so the tackle wasn't complete so he was entitled to steal it the referee and the two touch judges perfectly correct to carry on uh, allowing play on for from that situation i think sebastian planas was trying to play the ball get up and play the ball and he just had it uh, stolen from him by josh mccrone so uh, ryan briley with the attempt to add the extras made his name with paul roley at leeds remember 2012 to 2016 a prolific point scorer for the Lee Centurions Time on. and Briley he adds the extra two points Toronto lead by six points to nil not only have they got some competitive they've got some world-class stars and when you look at Josh McCrone he spots something on the short side he knows that they've got numbers anytime you can give this man the ball in space he's going to be difficult to stop but McCrone with the one-on-one -on -one strip he knew exactly where his winger was and it's a good start from both sides but Toronto get the first points. Well, they led 8 0 in the first half against Warrington last week at Toronto. A try from Liam Kay and Adam Hickson. But that's not the best restart for them. McCrone puts the hand up straight through his uh, fingertips. Well, going to be disappointed with that. Maybe the sun was in his eyes then, Josh say, McCrone. It's straight in his eyes. Yeah. Got plenty of height. You could see that he puts his hands above the, his head. He posi positionally, he gets it all wrong. Scores a try in front on the scoreboard, 6-0, and okay, then you come up with that mistake straight from the kickoff. Drop out underneath their own sticks then. Chance here for Toulouse to strike back almost immediately, if they possibly can. Bezik was first to the runner. Hold! And he gets to his feet and plays the ball to Kroash again. He's gone without it once again, a knock-on. Well, criminal, the first tackle really from the goal line dropout. Well, Perez just making that mistake and in decent field position on the second play. You've got to make sure that if you do get set to six and you are early in the tackle count, you're 35 metres from the opponent's line, you've got to make sure that you set the lines, you set the start points for your half backs. Jonathan Ford will be standing behind the forwards, telling what point of attack they want to get to. Unfortunately, that's just a poor mistake. Yeah, a mistake from Maxime Puesh in his third season with Toulouse Olympique. Nice and quickly there with the, the tackle. Now they're uh, on the back foot a little bit here, the French side. That's another okay. knock on, is it? No, it went backwards, says referee Miklauskas. So play on. They have it with Gareth O'Brien. Here now is Jacob Emmett. Three. Working really hard from the inside to lose, trying to put pressure on the, the ball players in McCrone and Briley. And Dixon takes the ball forward once again. He will play it there to Bob Bezik. Ashton Sims grits his teeth, takes it forward to the 20-metre line. Last tackle coming up here for Toronto. Bezik again gets the ball wide. McCrone off the boot, then in towards the corner. Well picked up by Corella, the uh, fullback for Toulouse, moving across, cutting out the danger. Well, they'll be to be down straight away then, Corella. Clever kick from Toronto, spot some space. Toulouse just shooting out the line trying to close the players down and this is where they like to keep you now a couple of players at toronto need to make sure the discipline with the referee stay on side to give 16 penalties away last week against warrington very physical in that game good shot from corey patson here trying to make the, the play the ball slow and doing a decent job as well well many uh, canadian viewers will be up and watching this today i'm sure from Newcastle, wait, wait. Go on, go on. and they'll be happy that their uh, team is featuring on Sky Sports, Good and team. more importantly, they're 6-0 ahead early in the piece here okay. at the Dacha Magic Weekend. And welcome along to Rugby League, you're Stand part of the family up. now, Stand. as Chase Stanley goes into go. dummy half.
Six nil ahead, Eddie, and, and look by far the more composed of the two sides. This is a looks like a stage they're very, very comfortable on Toronto. You see the the way that they're working through the sets as well, even distribution of play, the backs are getting in, taking plenty of work from the forwards, and then these probing lines from Ashton Sims, they're gonna to start to take their toll on this Toulouse defense. And the heat as well. I mean, they're lucky that they're playing a little bit earlier in the Magic Weekend than normal. Here is a knock-on, though, by the Toronto Wolfpack. I think the conditions would favour the, the Toulouse side from the south of France. The timing wasn't quite right for that pass then. Can get pretty warm in Toronto, Terry. It can, but it's not as warm there this time of year, Eddie, as what it is in the south of France. I think they've only been over there once. <laughs> <laughs> this year, anyway. They have a, a raft of fixtures coming up at Lamport Field at the end of the, uh, the season. And as I said in the build-up to this, if Toronto win, Jake, you must make the odds me. on to finish right. top of the pile. Well, you just look down the back line of the, the plays that they've got at the disposal, and the back line looks like a, a Super League side. They've got big forwards. They're, they're led by Aston Sims, who's a good leader on and off the field for the club, along with Bob Bezic, Jake Emmett. They've got some real quality okay, stars. There's been an awful lot of money spent at both of these sides. Make sure we'll bind it. It's a shame for Toulouse that so many of their big money signings are watching from the stands today. Yeah, but the Corey, but Toulouse on. themselves, Eddie, even come though they're missing out. the likes of uh, Sam Repair and Eddie Pettibon, that they've still got one, enough three, players three, with enough qualities to cause some problems, Score but they one. can't be near Actually, their own on, end ten. of the field. This is uh, Puesh again, Move trying to make up for that uh, error Hold. early in the tackle Hold count. Three. Last time they had the ball in their hands. Puesh gets it away here, and this is uh, Adam Bentley. Andrew Bentley, I beg your pardon, four years with the Catalan Hold. Dragons was uh, Bentley. Kruash to his feet, uh, okay. Bentley to his feet, plays the ball to Kruash. Ford does well, spins out of trouble. The ball is fed out here down this uh, left-hand side to James oh. Worthington. Worthington only arrived to lose on Wednesday. He's on loan from Wigan. Curran takes the ball forward. Five, move Andrew! They've reached tackle number five to lose. They are going to give away a penalty Bruce, here for... Stand up and play the ball. Didn't get up to his feet and play the ball correctly. Well, there's a few times in this position off. that they've made mistakes. And the referee just saying oh. that, look, you've got to make sure that you get up, play the ball Wait correctly. There. They're the ones oh, that are really right. punish you out there. I mean, they, they, they are up against it by the way that the first ten minutes of this game has gone. They, they look a little nervous. They're not completting the sets. They're not able Let to put any Come pressure on, on this Toronto outfit. And this is not the area of the field that you want them. Not with men like One, Ashton Sims three, marauding two. forward. Midway inside the to lose half of the field now. And it's Ryan Briley gets the short pass away to Dixon. That's good defense. Curran was in very quickly. Bezic and Briley. And Briley fires the pass. McCrone tries to bring Patterson into it. Patterson making good progress despite three shirts around him and trying to get almost to the try line. Just pushed back. There is Emmett. Oh, good ball. Stanley even better. And out wide it comes, and that is Matty Russell on his Toronto Wolfpack debut. <laughs> Former Wigan Hull and Warrington man, a two-year deal signed with Toronto. This is his debut. He was cup-tied last week. He couldn't play against his former club. But Matty Russell gets his Toronto Wolfpack try tally up and running here. Well, get into the fifth plate, 50 metres from your line, you give the ball over, don't get to the kick, and that, that's criminal, really. Jonathan Ford, we've given a lot of plaudits for what he does when he's got the ball, but he's either got to communicate better and pull more players out towards him, so he's in a more of a comfortable position when he's defending, because he tries to go in, gets caught in absolute no-man's land, and Toronto shift the ball out. First of all, it was Liam Kerr. Second try that they've scored, it's the opposite winger in Matty Russell. Well, they're good to watch, aren't they? They're very good, yeah. I think the player that we've not mentioned enough already today is the quality that Gareth O'Brien brings from, from the fullback position. Matty Russell, the eventual try scorer, and, and he'll be he'll be full of that now because it's his debut for the Wolfpack on, on this stage. But Gareth O'Brien, I, I think he's one of the, the the better quality players in Super League, and here he is playing his trade for Toronto. Great timed ball. You mentioned that they got the numbers wrong there on that left edge. Still needs taking advantage of, still needs the right pass selection. And I think he got that just right, didn't he? To uh, chase Stanley and then on, on to Russell for Toronto's second score. 
Well, Matty Russell's got a great opportunity to stamp his authority down this uh, wing for Toronto. Uh, Adam Hickson will be out for 10 weeks with a fractured collarbone. He's probably quite happy that he's not actually playing here today because he was sent off in the Magic last year for the Lee Centurions. Here is Briley. He's brought his shooting boots with him, that's for sure. And the Toronto Wolf back lead by 12 points to nil. Just less than a point a minute. Remember the challenge as well last year, it was a, a shocker, wasn't it? This is the ball that I'm talking about. Assessing the defensive line and then that cutout pass to Stanley, to Russell in the corner. It's accomplished, it's composed. And probably the first of many for that man. Well, I mentioned the fact that uh, viewers in Canada are watching this on Sportsnet World. I bet you're enjoying exactly what you're seeing and you could have enjoyed even more here because this kickoff sailing out on the full and you expect better from Mark Kerala. Well, well, the last two times that they've they've got to the Kicking either Gareth. the kick or they've got to this early, they've made mistakes. And that's just not good enough because Toronto are now just 40 metres from Toulouse's line. It, it's like it, it can't be repetitive, you can't keep defending your own line. They're really getting caught as they play direct but they're playing and shifting the ball here. Oh, and they have numbers out on that left-hand side as well. It was an important oh. ankle tap oh, and the tackle finished off by Boye. That's Patterson, he gets it away once again to McCrone. Yeah. Only with Canberra Raiders. And uh, what's more, they've defended really well because they've bundled the ex-Raider over the touchline on the far side. Well, they needed it as well. Three players there in attendance for Toulouse. Tried to offload the ball back in the, the field of play, knowing that they were going to get pushed from the, the pitch. It's good defence, and it's defence that's needed as well. There's Marguerite has showed up well there. His first contact has not just tried to take McGrone to the floor, he's held him up and allowed time for the rest of his defenders to come across. Used the touchline to their advantage okay, and they needed that as well because they couldn't have gone another score down. That would have changed the entire complex of the game. A little more history than the Toronto Wolfpack, Toulouse Olympique. They were founded 1937 come on. and they are six-time winners on. of the French Rugby League Championship. Pouesh here. Two. Wrestled to the ground. There's that man through Ash. They hit with some force, don't they? Sam Hopkins then just getting off his line. Good contact initially on Bentley. Ford, he is the magician. Curran now takes it forward. He is the go-to man. Look, he wants to be involved, and in fact, he called the referee Scott McClauskas then to give that penalty, and the referee had no alternative. Hands in at the rock by Jake Emmett. The Ford and Curran just really do look after this left-hand side. Comes back on the on an angle, finds his front. Toronto knowing that they didn't quite win that play, trying to slow it down a bit, and they get the penalty from that. Toronto won't be uh, well, the Toulouse won't be uh, overly concerned, John, because in that Easter match they were were trailing badly, but they had a real late rally. They almost nicked okay. it, 24-22 it was in the end. Yeah, they, they, they've, got a, they've got some smart operators on the field, but I think that arguably the most significant individual at club is the coach, Sylvan Hules. I mean, he has been spoken about in the very highest terms. People fully expect him to be a Super League coach in the future. If not with Toulouse, then with another another team. That's the regard in which he's held. So he's got this, he's got this group of men working for one another, and you're right, they'll not be panicking. That said, they need to start taking advantage of the time that they are spending down in this area of the field. Artao spins away from the, the would-be challenge. Smash. Big day for the uh, Hules family. Uh, Sylvain's wife, Maud, is English-born. She actually comes from okay, Newcastle, well. and all her family are nice. here at St James's Park Ford. today to see his team in action. Well, they get a penalty here. Toronto player caught on the wrong side of the rook. think it's Josh McCrum. Well, I do think they missed an opportunity again. It's Jonathan Ford, the man we're talking about, when they get in that field position, fixes defenders, threads the players through the gap, and then when they're looking for an offload, someone needs to be there on the jump. Well, no point in even thinking about the two points on offer. And Bentley carting it forward into the 10 metre zone of Toronto for the first time. So let's see how good the Wolfpack are at defence. Well, that's good work from Corella, their leading scorer. The only ever present in the side this year, Mark Carella. But he's grounded five metres away from the line, a bit of an entanglement with Chase Stanley. Oh, and he's going on his own here, and he gets the try! Does the hooker, Kouache. That's good play from Toulouse, and the first time that the Toronto defence 
was under pressure. Toulouse found the hole, found the gap, and Corella gets over for his 12th try of the season. Uh, uh, Kruach, I beg your pardon, gets over for his fourth try of the season. Well, a couple of penalties here that they, that they received. They marched Toronto down there, their own try line. Corella only sits in the rook behind Ford. And then you can see when he gets out here, Grass, he's got some men that are running in, they're looking at hitting some holes. And he's a little powerful player. He gets rid of Stanley and over for the for the first try for Toulouse. Uh, the man X of Carcassonne and the London Scholars. Murad Krayush. His brother Hosni also is a, a rugby league player. He's done particularly well because there was there was a play set there with Boyer, one of one of two forwards who were stood on the outside of him. That was the play. But he's prepared to play with his eyes open. Have a look at what the defence is doing inside of him. Chase Stanley didn't work hard enough from the marker position and they've taken advantage. And they'll be pleased with this return because the time they spent down here has not been significant. Well, he's a prolific goal kicker, Stanley. is Kerala. That was an easy chance for him, but the lead is hard. Toronto 12, Toulouse 6. Yeah, yeah it's just getting the eyes up there. It was Boyer and Puesh who were offering the two hard lines underneath the sticks. Kruash has decided to take things into his own hands. That's always good to see a player who's prepared to abandon a play for a better option, rather than just going through with that same play. They get the rewards. They do indeed. 12-6 now, though, to Toronto. And in no hurry to restart this match. We're uh, just after one o'clock, the temperature is rising, the mercury rising in the thermometers. It's a warm day. I think when the first Super League match gets underway at about three o'clock, it will be boiling hot out there at pitch side. Here is a penalty now to Toulouse, and don't tell me the indiscipline that Toronto showed in the cup tight. Warrington is coming back to haunt them. Three in a row against them. Well, they had a couple of penalties in good field position. Now Remain. want to get out of the, the poor position that they're in, which will certainly help them. And to lose, I'm sure that there'll be a lot of talk in their ranks about getting through the sets and making sure that they're completing and getting to the kick. They'll knock these sets out in five. Get through five sets of six, get to your kick, you'll grind down the opposition. You'll force them into to making poor errors. Rash at dummy half. He is Ford, gets it away to Corella. We're all trying to spin away from three. Andrew three, Dixon three. and uh, uh, Hopkins, Sam oh, Hopkins. Crash again. It's a short ball away. Four. Boyer now. Three, come on, come on. Midway oh, inside the Wolfpack half of the field. Good run. Ford once again. Stanley gets to him. He gets the arms five. free. Gets the ball away. Oh. Goal five. And Adair was the man who was on the end of the pass. Ford stabs the kick towards the corner. It's a good kick too, but just 20. the wrong side of the corner post. And Gareth O'Brien took the option, took the gamble, and it paid off for him. You know, the kick wasn't the, the best one wait there, wait there. It's from Ford. He wanted it to, okay. sound, to land this side. And well, I'm really impressed, Eddie, with Kriash. I think that the way he's getting out from dummy half, he's causing an awful lot of problems. And you can Zero. see that the, the Toronto players are just sitting back, some of those bigger forwards in the middle. Not knowing how to deal with him. It's because he's playing what he's seen in front of him. There's no there's nothing preordained about what he's doing. He's picking the ball up, oh. having a look at the defensive Go line. On. And whilst this Toronto defensive line are being challenged as good as they are in attack, Go. that Go. is argue they're still their Achilles Go. heel. They play in a certain style, don't they, Terry? Close to the edge. Oh, that's a good hit. Go. Bentley. Go. Wow, oh. right over the top. And Jake Emmett felt it. that. You both think Toronto is because of that kick going touch and goal, they get a seven tackle set but now it's a penalty to Toulouse. Yeah. Yeah. Contact with the Obstruction defender, okay, just on the far side there, yeah. ran around his own man. Good shot that wasn't it from Bentley, straight over the top, very dominant on Jake Emmett, shoulder in, he wore that tackle well, to get this penalty, this is the fourth one I think on the bounce now, It is. Toulouse has had. That more a technical well, penalty Corey. wasn't it, the, uh, the obstruction, the other three. But for indiscretions around the play, the ball really. One. No one sure they'll take any penalty oh. that they get, Eddie. To lose will. Absolutely Goal right. right okay, We're back in that? this match, that's for sure. Bentley. Two. Taking it forward. Toronto oh. having to work hard in defence here. 
and that is uh, Marion on the field, and that's a knock-on. In fact, it's penalty. a penalty, another penalty to Toulouse. He collected the ball. Okay. Saying the, the Toulouse, Time was it off. the full-back Corella who was tackled without the ball? Josh! That's five in a row, and the referee here, as we watch this replay, he's going to have a word with Josh McCrone and warn him, I think, about the club's discipline and the fact they've had five penalties on the run. That was a harsh one, I thought. OK, Josh. Not, not, not as clear-cut. We've got a few too many penalties now for various reasons yeah. against your side, yeah. OK? I want you lads to clear the rock yeah. and sort it out, OK? okay well, go and talk bit, to I'll them, I'll hold it, yeah. you go and talk to them. OK, that's fine. Well, he has... Um, He's learned his he lesson from last week. I'm gonna, well, he, he does, but he also has a lot to say, doesn't he, Josh McCrone, to referees? He, uh, he doesn't it's take it back with step Ben okay. Thaler would okay. tell you that, I think, after the cup <laughs> tie. I think Phil Clark's the, the, the good statistician on this one. I think 40%, he was telling me earlier today, of on penalties minutes, given away in a game of for infringements around the rook. So that's, it's not uncommon. One. Tyler Heppy, that could have been another penalty there. There was a second push by Emmett on him. Here is Marion. Two. Utility Three back. Rash. Goal line! Ryan! Triash still out there. He's in at least forward, I think, right now. Is Marion, even though he's got nine Three. on his back. Move. Hold. Because the dummy Hold. half there once again. Goal three. Is Murad Kriash. He gets it away Four. to Bentley. Move. Bentley then found that man, Hold. Marion. Hold. And they're very close to the line once more. Last time they were down here so close, they got over for the try. Possibilities here Five. from Happy. Good defence required and good defence produced by Emmett. Kriash again. Into centre field it goes. This is Corella, short ball, forward, forward pass. Oh, so unlucky, because they had the numbers. It was a, a, a fudged... In fact, it's an obstruction that's been given yeah, away again. Obstruction penalty. Just went through on the man, left him on the Wait, ground. All the side, fellas. They had the numbers. Was there a need to obstruct? Was there a need for that? Yeah, that's a clear obstruction. But look at the numbers they had anyway. That's the most frustrating thing, isn't it? Yes, that was a clear obstruction penalty, but... You know, I guess more encouragingly for for Toulouse and, and Sylvan Hulas can take that into his half-time briefing with these men is that you know this Toronto side is 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 fallible. There are errors there. There are spaces. Dolce Krasnicki is on the field, as is Adam Sidlow. That is Bezik. There is Emmett. There is Sidlow. Started at witness. Adam Sidlow. Many of these names I know in the red jerseys will be familiar to you. If you watch the Super League over the past 22 seasons. Besic once more. Scamper away. Gets the ball wide. McCrone. Five. From Tamora in Australia, Josh McCrone. Plays the ball to Besic. This is Briley. Short ball to Patterson. But they're in numbers again. Patterson's on his way over the line. It's good defence down that right-hand side for Toulouse. Again, Eddie, what, what they're doing is they're getting underneath the big man in Corey Patterson, holding him up, not letting him get to ground. Not letting him find his feet, elbows and knees to play the ball maybe for a, another attack. I actually think there's a couple of occasions now where Patterson's got himself in the wrong the wrong attacking hole. I think he's, he's too hole? close, too close to his yeah. half-back, whether that's been McCrone or Briley oh. on that occasion. He needs to step out and angle back in because you're right, they're doing an excellent oh. job of not just tackling but holding and moving oh. as well. Look, we've only seen them at close quarters for 25 minutes, but looking at what we have seen and thinking about what we've seen, would either of these two sides hold their own in the Super League? Eddie, it's getting up into Super League, but the, the sides will change anyway. They'll still recruit top-line players. You've seen the, the amount of money that especially Toronto has spent over the past couple of years signing and paying big money, not only in transfers, but contracts for some of these players. I think those mid lakes are going to be really interesting this year. These are two extremely oh. strong yeah. and likely contenders uh, for the for the mid lakes. Definite contenders, I think we can probably say, even at this early stage. And, and there are some some cracks appearing at the bottom end of Super League as well. Could be very very interesting come July and August. Ford with a high kick. It has been pointed out to me once already today that if Toulouse win were to lose this match here against Toronto and London Broncos won tomorrow because of the uh, Broncos. Superior points difference. The Broncos would be in oh, second place in the table. So stakes are high. And and to lose only three league points behind Toronto. So it's a not saying it's a must-win game, but it's a game that they'll be wanting to win to finish at the top end of the 
the table. Glorious day, glorious day here in Newcastle. And uh, I hope they've all got the sunscreen on because the uh, sun is whoa, whoa, whoa. really, really hot oh, today. 26 minutes gone to lose ping for offside at the play the ball. And of course, uh, this is a, a great spring oh, festival, on, on, all on, sorts on, of on, colors. On, Later on, I'm sure we'll see all sorts of fancy dress costumes as well, because not only is this a rugby league day, I'm sure there are one or two big Terry, parties. Oh, Terry's not doing studio for another <laughs> couple of hours, though. It was down the fan zone before, it was a great atmosphere. Two, move on to there! And uh, Scott two. Quinnell is here with the uh, fan three. van move. out and about around Newcastle. Goal three. He's been, uh, he's been all over the world, has uh, Scott move Quinnell, but he's enjoying... Goal this magic weekend and he'll certainly enjoy his old club Wigan Shot, when they come five, on move. against uh, Warrington he'll be actually in the studio for the build-up to that here now is Briley hoists a kick to that far side okay. oh, well, taken. well claimed over there and I think it's a penalty because he was tackled in the air Stabby. yeah rightly so as well and some of these I've, I think have been given too harshly but you can see there's a disadvantage there to the receiving player Centroni's done extremely well to take that deserves the penalty too. John, what's it like standing underneath one of those balls when they're coming down? There's three players running at you. It's really difficult because if the, if the kick is accurate as it was from Briley, you are you are rooted almost. You feel you feel it very difficult to get off the floor. What? It's a it's a skill that is Move. extremely hard Ball. because it's counterintuitive. You've got to try and. Well, uh, all the matches coming up for you later on for the Magic Weekend. Witness Saints, Two. Wigan, Warrington Move follows that, down. and then Ball. repeat of last year's grand Gold final two. to see off the first day. Scott Cornell will be involved in that Wigan Warrington match with us. And then, as I'll say, repeated the grand Ball. final. Castleford against Leeds finishes it off at 7.15. All on Sky Sports Arena here this afternoon Ball. and this evening. Move. I thought that was a rhetorical question you asked John Wells about what's it like Outside. being under a high ball on the wing. Did he, did he ever get underneath a high ball on the <laughs> several, wing? Several, several. Not always with the right outcome. <laughs> I was going to say, did you ever catch a few? I've got some old footage. <laughs> I'll share it with you later. I thought you were going to say, I've got a few old Bold. wounds. <laughs> it's a good contest, this, to kick off the Dacia Magic Weekend two. 2018. Two. Big 12 minutes here for both sides as well, because another try from Toulouse. Three. It'll give Three. them an extra lift. A try from Bold. Toronto just puts Bold. that doubt going into to half time in the Toulouse side. Four. Worthington Three. takes Three. it forward. Over 150 first-team appearances for him since 2011. Five, move Tyler! Solid tackling coming in. He's happy again. Five. Play that. And uh, well played by Worthington. Oh, but then he comes up with a knock-on. He's got his foot to it. You can see how distraught the youngster is. He's only 18 years of age. Oh, he did the hard bit as well, Ed. You know, took the pace off the ball and then just misjudged the, the little bobble and he's put them under pressure. I was j just about to say that Toulouse had looked to ga have gathered themselves and uh, had looked a lot more composed. Yes, Toronto are still making plenty of metres downfield. And they're ending sets on the front go, foot, which is, is buying an awful lot of time Let's for the likes boys. of Brian and McCrone. But and Toulouse, they're, they're, they're really warm into this game. It's these little errors that are putting them under unnecessary pressure. Have a look at Gareth O'Brien, his position off this scrum. I think he'll be a, a really key involvement off here. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. He is, he's uh, lying in wait in centre field, well is Gareth O'Brien. And you mentioned earlier on the, the big and the heavy investment that they've made in Canada. They've just signed Cronulla's Ricky Lutelli for Corey 2019. And uh, the reports One. are Move. Oh, over a million dollars in two player. years. Absolutely outstanding centre. This is uh, Patterson. And chances here for Sidlow, and Sidlow getting to the line, and Toulouse straining every sinew to push him back into the field of play. Bezik, good ball, Dixon, and Dixon spins away from the would-be challenges, and Dixon gets over the line. I think he left Tyler Heppy trailing in his wake. Heppy just couldn't bring him down. Happiness for the Toronto supporters who are here. And I saw a few cars coming into the car park today with... Toronto Wolfpack stickers on them. Well, I, I don't think for a minute they're coming from Canada, but they're everybody's second team, aren't they? It's the mistake from the youngster, Worthington, that set them up. It's harsh, it's always harsh when these are capitalised upon. 
and it's Jonathan Ford who just goes too high, gets on the wrong, the wrong side of Dixon. But credit to the Toronto back rower because he spins out of that tackle. There's a fend there as well, and he puts the sending off of seven days ago well behind him with what could be a really significant score for the Wolfpack. Well, he's been to a grand final, has Andrew Dixon. He's got a try for Saints in the 2010 grand final defeat to Wigan by 10 points to 22. And I wonder whether Andrew Dixon and this Toronto Wolfpack side will claw their way into Super League in only their, the end of their second season in existence. What an achievement that would be. It's been absolutely incredible. I know they spent bundles, but you know what I mean. Well, to assemble a side and assemble a side that, that can play, and let, let's be honest here, that the majority of teams in the Championship and the Championship 1 have been envious of what they've been doing, and Paul Rawley, Simon Finnegan have done a, a very good job assembling a side, and not only just assembling a side, a side that actually wants to go out there and play and entertain. Well, I think that's a key point as well, just spending money and throwing money at something doesn't yeah, necessarily doesn't mean work. you're going to create a team. We've yeah. seen that mistake made several times before in Super League. So there's, there's, there's credit there to, to Brian Noble and to Paul Rowley for forming a team out of those individuals and some superb individuals as well. I think we just better temper the news we gave you before about the telly from uh, the Cronulla. It is being reported on the, uh, the websites. Reportedly, he has signed for Toronto no. from Cronulla. But um, normally, where I'm, there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, Eddie, Eddie, I'm going with your news flash. That's it. He's <laughs> nailed on for next year. Well, Dixon there, he scores a try, and he spots Jonathan Ford. And if you look at Jonathan Ford's legs and, and feet when he tries to prevent that tackle, the, his legs oh, and feet course. are too wide. He's got no power in trying to stop the, the big man from going over. Okay. Well, his starting position wasn't great either, was he? found himself... Yeah, the, the legs and arms were splayed because he found himself in the wrong position, on the wrong shoulder. It was a nicely finished by Dixon. Kick off into the sun again from Toulouse. It's important that they respond now. It is. We missed the one. conversion. So it's only a 10-point lead. Just over eight minutes to the half-time siren. Liam Kay gets the ball away. Well, that's what I like about Liam Kay. Like the back three for, for Toronto in Gareth O'Brien, Matty Russell, Liam Kay. Liam Kay actually plays, likes to link up, just doesn't scoop from dummy half or catch the ball on the full and just run into a defender. He actually does look to engage the defenders and help one of his teammates. Quick play, the balls are what it's all about. Bezic gets the pass away again to Andrew Dixon. They've reached tackle number five, getting through the set very quickly. There is Briley. Oh, that went out on the full. Touch. Well, it looked like it went out on the full from up here, but the touch judge was certainly closer to it than I was. But it's out on the full. Yeah, should have been, should have been a handover instead of the scrum. No video referee, remember, so no one can have a little word in the ear of Scott McClauskas, but the touch judge was very close to that. They all seemed very quick, didn't it? Tackle three, four and five, the early players that they, they won them quite easily, really, and then the next caddies were all on the front, and then and Ryan Bradley gets that ball, and that's too quick for the, for the touch judge and, and the referee. And that's the salient point, right isn't it, Terry? That, that they're now visibly hey, playing on the front foot. They've got more time, they can Out. pick the lines of running, the kickers can assess the backfield, and you know, notwithstanding the, the, the poor execution they've got away with there with Ryan Bradley, they're, they're, they're looking like the dominant side now. It's an important five. Oh, important, ooh, what we got? Seven and a half minutes left before half time for Toulouse. Cannot afford another score. Would like to get one back themselves. We're watching two sides here who really have blazed the trail, particularly in the League One. Uh, programs over the past two years. We'll see them both again next week in the Summer Bash. In Blackpool, day one, day two, Saturday, Sunday next week, bank holiday weekend. Big weekend for the championship clubs. Bartow gets this ball away. In yeah, the uh, 2016, they were unbeaten in 21 rounds in League One, were to lose. They did draw at Rochdale. But they won the other 20. Good line speed. Oh. Needed here. Jake Stanley will have a scamper from dummy half. Said he's, uh, he's as big and as strong as most oh. forwards. Him over 100 kilo, Jay Stanley. Another one from uh, NRL pedigree. McCrone with a nice little layoff ball to Krasnicki. Here is Ashton Sims again. Bump, big collision then. Four. Move, Tyler! 
Tyler Heppy, though, stood his ground. It's Briley. Briley slips the pass. It's Blake Wallace. At, no, it's Andrew Dixon, I beg your pardon. There is Briley. And Briley, the kick this time, straight into the arms of Worthington. Well, a couple of times he's tried to just knock the ball out of the field over on the right hand side. Just let the, his teammates walk to the scrum and just compose themselves, get ready for a, a big defensive set. I think he's changed his, his game. Since he's gone to Toronto, penalty here again. I think there's also a recognition by Bryder that his side, as, as big and as aggressive as they are, are flagging a little in the heat. And that would be certainly one of the reasons why you'd look to look to find touch, take the rhythm out of this game. And that's, you know, could play into Toulouse's hands. They've backed that up with an error, which would suggest there is some fatigue there, certainly defensively with his side. Well, they're behind on the scoreboard, Toulouse Olympique, but they're leading the penalty count 8-4. And this is uh, Reese Curran for them. And it began at West Tigers. As Heppy takes the ball forward again. Right in the middle of the park, centre field. Toulouse looking for something in the last uh, four and a half minutes of this first half. Jonathan Ford gets the pass away. It's Corella. You know the danger that he poses. There's three of them there to bring him down. This now is Busniak. Followed by Bezik. Carrera again. Five, six metres away. Ford. Good ball. Picked up by Bartow. And then a misunderstanding. The ball goes to ground. Okay, we're going here. Time off. Yeah, yeah. Referee Scott Metklauskas is giving head and feed to Toronto here. Yeah, no, that error. Knock on either way. No, I think it's called a knock on against um, against Toulouse, followed by a forward pass from Toronto. But it's another it's another error in the execution when they they did have numbers, they did have something brewing on that that Toronto left edge. Doesn't look all that convincing. A couple of times that Jonathan Ford has been going, he's got a really lax loose shell, hasn't he, with his hands, and he's quite deceptive. But it's getting out there, and it's the, the lack of finesse in the execution that's letting Toulouse down at the moment. Got quality though. Ford, 2016 League One Player of the Year, reigning to lose Player of the Year. Cook Islands International in the 2013 World Cup. He really is the engine room of this Toulouse side. Oh, it's quality, Eddie, but he just needs some quick rooks, doesn't he? To play off, it's very difficult when you're up against the dominant side that's turning the players onto the back. Trying to come up with a play on the back of that is difficult. Nice ball from Sidlow to McCrone. He then asks for the runner to come back on the inside, which he did, Gareth O'Brien. He plays it then to Bezik. And this now is Krasnicki again. They're going down that left-hand channel once again. McCrone, he knows how close they are to half-time, just drills the ball all on the ground. And there'll be in no hurry either side, I think, to form this scrum and get the referee to call time off. It's boiling hot out there. Well, Josh McCrone knows how important it is now not to concede a try before half time. Just ask some questions in defence down there to lose his line. I think when you look at Josh McCrone since he signed for Toronto, okay, it took him time to settle in the way that they're played. And you look at the NRL, quite structured, get through your set, all about completions. Well, this Toulouse side are a side that do play direct, like to respect the ball, but do chance their arm as well. What would they give for a try here as we approach half time? Come on, Chase. Go one. That was uh, Marguerite who played the ball. Two. Move all, sir. Toronto, Hold. desperate to keep them down this Hold. end of the field. A bit of uh, laying on there by Krasnicki as well. This is uh, Sangare. Move. Only played 14 times just in Sangare in the past two seasons. Buzinak gets the pass away once again. That's knocked out. Zero. Should be six to go. It is. Sangare, referee. Signals to him, zero. that's the zero tackle, so six more from here. Thought he was going to kick it then. It looked like it, didn't it, for a moment. Bartow one. gets them over halfway. Go one. So to lose in possession, now inside the Toronto half of the field with Marion. Twelve metres inside Toronto territory. Jonathan Ford again, good hands. Good pass out wide. Here is Worthington. The young Wiganer on loan. 
enjoying, I'm sure, even though it's been brief, the lifestyle in the south of France. Ford again. Dropped a neat pass off once and more, and that's a great try for Marion. And there were question marks about that defence from Toronto then. Anthony Marion, formerly with Albi. Utility back, on as a substitute. And I wonder if that is the uh, family of Sylvain Hules and his wife. They're celebrating anyway because they're back within six points and might be within four by half time. And, and shouldn't they be celebrating as well? Looking very much like they're going to be within a score. And that's the re repeat set. And Jonathan Ford, who you got a quick glimpse off there, is this is where he's at his very best. Look how look how relaxed he is going to the line. You know, plays the ball very, very late back on the inside. You caught the Toronto defense just off the heels a little bit lovely relaxed style can be really deceptive a nice fence gets rid of dixon and isn't he pleased it's a really really significant time to score and a really significant try in itself and this is a big kick now for mark carella he's uh, already kicked one successfully today this will be for him the 70th of his season but more importantly it puts toulouse within four points as we're in the last minute of the first half, he's missed it. He sliced it wide. The referee has given it, and so have the touch judges. I'm sure that Miss Stewart, of my eyes, I mean, these these glasses are about <laughs> need, one pound fifty. You need better glasses, Eddie. Well, we're right behind it, aren't we? Right behind the line of it, and that, that clearly missed at the right-hand side of the post. So, whether wow. the, uh, the sun's in the eyes of the touch judges, but if they put their flags up, the referee has to give it. Eddie, go and take your cheap glasses and maybe give them to the touch judges. <laughs> that's what you need to do. Wow, that's the that's the view we saw. But the referee, as Stewart says, he had no choice, did he? He had to give it once the touch judges had given the two flags had gone up. Yeah, if, if it's a split decision between the touch judges, then the referee decides. That's a system. It's a system that works well. But if both touch judges put their flags up, he has to give it. OK. Well, that's an element of luck for Toulouse. Curran gets the pass out wide once One. again. And makes it an interesting second it half makes as well. It a fantastic it. second half. Here is Curran once more. Carella into Sangare, and Sangare will take the final tackle of the first half and uh, Toronto the leaders are four points ahead against Toulouse the team in second place Kay with the first try Russell on his debut for Toronto Wolfpack they led 12 nil then the comeback began 18th minute Kruash with the try Dixon got a try not converted on the half hour 16-6 and right on the stroke of half-time, Marion's try and Carella, well, credited with the conversion, 16-12 at the break. Shoulder into the ribs and then leg drive from that point. And next year, we'll have cardboard cutouts of Barry and Terry. In fact, we have them already, and he's alongside me now, Terry. Well, nothing in that game in the first half, Eddie. Thought it was uh, really interesting to see how the Toronto acted or reacted when that kick was given just before the half-time. Paul Rawley, Simon Finnegan questioning the referee just as he was walking off the field. So, obviously... Toronto are a bit rattled with Toulouse, know now that they have got them in the sights, just four points behind. I'm sure they're going to be full of confidence as well here. Well, I'm sure that uh, Paul Rowley will be upset, and all the, the Toronto officials will be upset by the fact that that uh, conversion was given, but the fact of the matter is, as Stewart told us, once the touch judge's flags go up, the referee has nowhere to go. No, he, he doesn't, and I think it's, it, you know, it's not going to pay to dwell on that, is it? They've just got to move on and they've clearly been the, the more dominant of the two sides for the first 40 minutes they just need to go on and push on now they've got some what? some great ball players macron's had a quiet first half they've got briley on that right edge as well o'brien from fullback there's a side Move shot with talent but ball playing talent as well they can sort the running lines out and they're going to pose a real threat to Toulouse in this next 35 minutes there's nicky and uh, ashton sims dealing with the threat of adair 
solid runs Four. all the way down Four. the middle Four. from Toulouse. That latest one coming in from Tyler Heppy. Outside. Could have been and a penalty. Ford with a nice kick over the top. Could have been a penalty, Eddie, for a grapple tackle. Tyler Heppy was looking at the referee, but nothing came of it. This is Liam Kay as uh, Toronto come back at the Toulouse Olympic side. Let's find out what was said during half-time. I wonder how upset Paul Rowley was about that conversion, Ange. I think the word fury sprang to mind as I followed them up the tunnel. There were a few words said to the officials before they went into the changing room and a lot of shrugged shoulders and raised eyebrows. But he came out um, after the break and said, this is Paul Rowley, the coach. We've got to control what we can control. They learned a lot, they said, from last week in that game against Warrington. They've got to make sure that they keep the focus on the game, stick to the game plan, and completion is the big thing for them. And not to worry about those two points. I did ask Sylvain Houlez what he thought about those two points. And he said he laughed and said, Maybe we were a little bit fortunate there, but he's looking for better execution from his team, especially around the rook. That's a nice little slip pass. Here is uh, Greg Worthington. Five. Move. He gets to his feet here on the last and play the ball to Bezik, who comes down the short side. O'Brien gets it away to Liam Kay. I think he's. Has he got this in the corner? Has he touched it down? Yes, he has. It's a second try for Liam Kay. He got the very first try of the match, he's got the very first try of the second half. Well, it's a brave call, is this one? I, I, I don't, there's no problem with this. The way he finishes that, that, that's a try. Try all day, John. You disagree? Yeah, I do. Well, there's no video referees, remember, so it's what they see is what they give. He scores some good tries, Liam K. Makes over 100 metres every time he carries the ball. Knows how to finish. Left is his hand. arm up? Is his arm up? Is his arm up? Oh, he loses the ball. John Wells. And the booze around the ground tell everybody what they think about that. Wow. And Crayler's got away with nothing there, has he? No luck at all. I think he's been instrumental in defence for them, and he's just not got the break. Tries awarded. Stuart, there are a lot of people who criticise the video referee. And there is a clear case of why the video referee is vital. Well, that's it. You could, I was watching the, the officials when they're going through the process of awarding the try. You would never think, looking at them, that there was any doubt about it. They were very confident in the way they give it. But we can see, you know, from the replays that he clearly lost the ball. So the nicked, the nicked two points with a, a, a refereeing decision. They've just lost so the two, the two points up, aren't they? The, the, the two points down now, aren't they? On, on the net, net two points down. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying Toronto two points up here. Oh, They've still got another two to go here. <laughs> Come on, get with the programme, Wellesy. <laughs> Ryan Briley with this difficult conversion attempt. Oh, and he has rubbed salt in the wounds. 22 points to 12. And as I say, no video referee in operation here today for the Betfred Championship. Apart from the summer bash, the video referee is not used in the championship, and it would be grossly unfair to use it today. And a bit of news in the summer bash next weekend, we're going to be looking at a streamlined video referee operation. We'll say more about that during the course of the weekend, possibly, but certainly we'll tell you all about it next weekend. But no video referee in this match today, but there will be video referees, of course, in the Betfred Super League later. A streamline. Streamline. Has Ben Thaler been on a diet? <laughs> I think Steve Ganson has. Well, there you go. A call that's gone against either side, but it's cost the Toulouse club a lot more. Four more points. And Ford comes out of the line again. Whether they're short or whether there's just no communication over there, they've got to make sure they get that right. I noticed when... Four. Taylor. They were lining up, Brian oh. Bradley was lining up that conversion oh. attempt. Toulouse were in a huddle and they were talking and they were winding each other up to try and Five. get back into this match. Move. They know the call had gone against them, Go. nothing they can do, couldn't control it. What they can control is what's happening out there on the field right now. That's it, Eddie, you can control the controllables. Like you, you've got to make sure that when you have the ball, you do all the right things, okay. you turn up for your teammate whenever he's carrying the ball at the line, you've got to make sure that he's got options inside and out. Josh McCrone now knows that he's going to have a reaction. Paul Rowley has rode a bit of luck to get that try. He knows as well, though, that Toulouse are going to have a, a big part to say in this second half, whether it be for a 10-minute, 15-minute spell, and they've got a couple of tries in them. 
as I said at the start of the game, they scored That's more it. points than any other team in the championship, so that so they do know how That's to it. get over the try line. Liam K, by the way, now looking for his fourth try hat trick of the season in the next uh, 35 Stand. minutes or so. Go. As to lose, try and bring this ball forward again with Justin Sangare, no. French under 18 oh. international prop forward. William Bartow. Need a, a load of energy Hold. here. The Toulouse players getting forward. Maybe it's the route one or the little show and go like we just saw there. He's not bad, Marianne. Not the best play, the ball. Riash gets it away to Ford. Ford gets it wide to Adair. Lovely pass. Okay. And well picked Stand up by down. Worthington. Stand by. Worthington had just overrun it, but he uh, managed to put the brakes on. Here's Ford yeah. with a high kick now. And that really is an up and under. <laughs> No problem though for Liam Kay until Marianne got what? in his face. Well, it was a good attacking kick, wasn't it? And oh. Kay had to run for that ball, but there was no to lose player really challenging that ball. They didn't get the depth, so they could have with the on onside chase. There was just nobody there. That probably wasn't good enough what the coach was after. Three. Bartow again. Move. He was at uh, London oh. in 2015. William Bartow, oh. as well as playing for the Catalan Dragons. Briley gets it wide. Oh. And uh, Heppy. No, Dixon will pick himself up and play the ball to Briley again. Chase Stanley gets it wide to Russell, and Russell's pass play goes on, backwards off on. Reese Curran, so that's a play on decision from Scott Michalowskis, the referee. Massive, massive intervention by Reese Curran because that was a try. It was a try in waiting. He's put himself in exactly the right place. Russell looking to pass back on the inside. And I think Toronto go in there, and it's 26 or 28 points to 12. That's a, a very difficult position to come back with. Huge defensive play there by Curran. That's a good play from him. The Australian, second rower, Reese Curran. This is what I like about this Toulouse side. They, they, they've had some real luck go against them with the try being awarded. Uh, they've been able to put that Five. to rest and crack on. And really now, they've not had 10 out of 10 sets, but they've not been errors at the end of them either. With a high kick here, this time down the left-hand side from Barthau, well claimed by Worthington. And Worthington thinks the ball okay. up and over the, the top of the defenders, but Corey Patterson comes to the rescue. They will! For the, uh, the Toronto Wolfpack. Now, after this, next week's Summer Bash meeting against Lee, they do look odds on to repeat their table-topping year in League One last season. Um, the rest of them, the rest of their programme, as I said earlier in the Mr. first Bastian. half, will be played Hold. in Toronto at the Lamport Stadium. Four. Providing Move. the pitch is sorted out, because that's why they've been playing mostly over here in 2018. This is a good run from Bob Bezik, and he's got support there from McCrone. It's a good ball to Ryan Briley, and Ryan Briley goes underneath the sticks for a crucial Toronto try. And suddenly the hill becomes a mountain for Toulouse now in this second half. It was just a slow unravelling of that Toulouse defence. Toronto continuing to probe. And Terry, some real key involvements there from Bezik and McCrone in assisting Ryan Briley with his try. I remember Bob Bezik coming through the system at Wigan as a youngster, and he's always been one of those intelligent players from dummy half. He spots a, a big man who can't quite get back. He gets out of dummy half, terrorises the... The defence, you can just see you rock back, you turn the wrong way, the offloads there for Macron, who all he's got to do is then draw the full back. And I, I think this man who scores the try, Ryan Briley, he's always been a threat whenever he's got the ball, but he's changed the way that he plays. He goes at the line, he really has become an attacking player. He has Ryan Briley when he moved from Lee to Huddersfield. We thought he'd set the Super League alight, and it didn't quite happen for him. So he's rediscovering himself in the championship once again. And if they get into Super League next year, perhaps we'll see the best of him. And, and an older and more mature Ryan Briley as well. I think one of the key things with him is knowing when to throw himself into that line, that attacking line. Arguably tried to do too much, tried to too hard in his time at Huddersfield. He looks a more relaxed, more composed, more accomplished player now. And, of course, he was under Paul Rowley at Lee, and he's under Paul Rowley at Toronto. I mean, a lot of players like to play for certain coaches, don't they? Yeah. They do, yeah. They, sometimes they, they have to find the team, they have to find the coach. But have a look at Briley stalking 
just on the right hand side of your pitcher. It's great fullback play. He's not playing at fullback, but obviously he has some experience there. And as a top quality half, he knows where that support play should be. Put himself in that position. So, 28-12. You just look at the pivots, Eddie, that they've got. Toronto, Gareth O'Brien, Josh McCrone, Ryan Briley, Bob Bezic. Some players there that cause you an awful lot of problems. If the forwards can get over their opponents, keep the discipline, they'll trouble more sides. We saw the worst of them last week in the Challenge Cup, but this week, I think, when they turned up here, they knew they were going to be challenged, but they have got a point to prove. Yes, um, Paul Rowley made that point, actually. Said he was very disappointed with the, uh, the performance at Warrington. That ball has come free, but I think it was a two-man steal, it was. And he wants to right the wrongs of last week, and uh, for a large part of this match here today in Newcastle, Toronto have righted the wrongs. Well, it's a, a, I think another harsh penalty. Adder's almost been offered the ball by Ashton Sims on that one. It's a you know, real pressure release. I think right. to strip that, John. Well, there's a responsibility there for the ball carrier to, to, to keep that under... Under in, in possession, I think it's a little bit of gamesmanship, perhaps, is that one. But he's earned one. himself 40 yards and a restart the tackle count. First penalty of the second half, and this time it goes Toronto's way. Here he is, Ashton Sims. He's a, he's a rugged old pro, he's a, a wily old fox, is Ashton Sims. Here's Briley, takes the ball away to chase Stanley. They've been really effective on the short side, haven't they? Had all game, first half that led to the Liam K first try. They're really moving this defence around. Good ball wide, Liam Kay's on his way for a hat-trick. It's a hat-trick for Liam Kay, and there's nothing wrong with that one. The fourth try hat-trick of season 2018 now for Liam Kay. 19 tries for the season. The man who was in Super League with Wakefield in 2012. Nine tries in his last four matches. Play, what a finisher. Play what you see, look at this. At the line, fixing defenders, all the half-backs, all the key individuals, and that pass there, that absolutely nailed it. That's a great finish from Liam Kay, but look where it started. There was a play, the play before, Briley with the man with the ball in the hands, took the ball short side. That opened up the defence, they got the numbers wrong. That led to the defenders shooting out of the line in Bastian Adair. And the ball found its mark to Liam Kay. Hat-trick today. He can finish. Well, nothing wrong with that one. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Liam Kay. 27 tries in 21 for Toronto last year after leaving Lee. 2015, he got 36 tries in 32 matches. He's been ever present this year as well as Liam Kay. And as we've all said, he knows how to finish down this left-hand side. Looking down on the Toronto bench, where they were a little bit uh, upset at half-time because a conversion was given that shouldn't have been. They're much happier right now as Ryan Briley lines up this latest conversion attempt. 20 points they lead by. Ryan Briley has just pulled this the wrong side of the uprights. 32-12, it stays. Hat-trick for Liam Kay. Well, when you have a lot of momentum like Toronto do, they are aware of the space, and Liam Kay is a, certainly one of those wingers who does find that space. When they throw the ball around, he certainly does know how to finish. And that ball from Josh McCrone, Liam Kay knows that he's got the, the okay. speed to get in and score. He just needs to make sure that he's got the right... He's holding that right position because he's... Half-back partners will find him. A hat-trick of tries, but one that never should have been given. Yeah, this, the, the middle one was was obviously that dodgy decision okay, and they've coughed up possession one, as well one, from the kickoff off They have to lose back in possession here with Rhys Curran. And that was uh, Buzinak, who was at dummy half. He got the, the pass away. Marion, try scorer in the first 40 minutes. Five metres away from the Toronto line. Boyer was the dummy runner. The dummy, dummy runner. Here is Marguerite. Marguerite almost through. Three. Good job that passed the ball and held on to him. He, no, he's had the ball stolen from him. Hands in at the ruck again by Toronto. If and when they get to Super League, they've got to tidy this discipline up. I said before, Eddie, 16 penalties last week, they really wait, do. Uh, wait. Leave that penalty away, knowing that to lose now, trying absolutely everything to score to try and get back in this game. 
Here they come with Boyer. The second spell to lose for Clement Boyer, the 23-year-old. There's uh, Buzinak again, gets the pass away. It comes rather untidily to Marguerite. Liam Kay was fighting for the ball on the ground. Marguerite got to it first. Corella to Buzinak. Here is Boyer again. Ten, eight metres out from the line. Jonathan Ford, can he open up this defence? Nice pass, Reese Curran again. All hands to the pump defensively. They play the ball, Buzinak, short pass. Chances here. Help! Relays! Five. And Bentley has halted. Buzinak goes himself, and Buzinak has pinched one from dummy half. Well, that's exactly what Toulouse wanted. That just might breathe life into them, because there's plenty of time left. 32-16, a long way back, but just what they needed, an early response. Isn't it, just and Two really smart hookers we've seen today. Buziak, the try scorer on this occasion. Remember the contribution from Crush. Similar sort of player, stocky, but more importantly than everything else, are prepared to play what's in front of them. This is the penalty conceded by Toronto, which gave Toulouse an extended look at that line. Last tackle play. Defenders got to solve problems that don't exist yet. And Buziak, he takes the initiative. Look at the width of the defender there, and it's the gap between the two defenders that's exploited by the hooker. Two smart hookers who are prepared to play what they see, abandon everything else. So here we go. Buziak with the try, and it's the man who has been around the French league that. Charles Buzinac. Here's the conversion attempt, and he's kicked it well. So 56, 57 minutes gone, plenty of time left. 32 18, Toronto. And it's a bit of a sucker punch, this. You're okay with teams scoring on the outside, but not coming through the middle. They conceded a try in the first half, exactly the same, and Krias just barged over. That won't please the coach. I'm sure that when you look Hello, back Zach at this Phillips. game, Paul Roller be saying, yeah, lads, look, what we did with the ball was really good, but try line defence has got to make sure we improve. When we're up against a couple of hookers that are always asking questions and looking to, to okay, probe around that. the try line you've got to make sure you switch on. Gareth O'Brien gets us back in play then. Now, they will play, I think, with a little bit of a spring in their step. Move. Will Hold. Toulouse Olympique? Hold. Well, nothing to, nothing to lose, have they, Eddie? They've got just over 20 minutes, the 14 points behind on the scoreboard. Chris Centrone is dumped to the ground rather unceremoniously. The players, you know, of Toulouse met pre-season with no coaches present, and they resolved to set a goal for themselves of finishing either first or second in the Betfred Championship in 2018. At the, the moment they're second, but well, if, the, uh, if they lose this, London it opens the door for them. It, it does temporarily, but these, this is a, I think it's a quality side. I think. The most important attribute that they've got is that they've got composure under pressure. This doesn't look like a side that's going to fold mentally. I think they've struggled with execution, particularly today, something that we've not seen an awful lot of from Toulouse in 2018. They've been fairly accomplished in attack. Just a couple of things that have, have not gone to hand, a couple of obstruction calls for them. They iron those out, they're a potent, potent attacking threat. And when you think, as I say, the, the, the big players who are well, not playing, Rapira, Con Mika, Eddie, Eddie Pettibon, Pettibon, Stan they, Robin. They're four big players, aren't they, that will certainly like, lift the side. Obviously, the, the likes of Con Mika, Sam Rapier, Eddie Pettibon really stiffen them up in the middle of the, sure the field. And probably you need well, those sorts of players to challenge the likes of Sam Hopkins, Corey Patterson, Ashton Sims, okay, Jake Emmett. You need those battle hardened Wait, pros. Out. There's a bit of an indicator, though, of the way the Toronto season has gone this year. They've conceded. 20 or more points only twice in the championship in 2018. Of course, they had the 66 points debacle last week for them at Warrington. But in the championship, they conceded 22 points in beating Toulouse in France over Easter, and they lost 16 points to 47 in their only defeat of 2018 at the London Broncos. And, and if you think about them as well, every time that any team plays the, the top side, whether it be in the Super League or the championship, you always raise your standards because you want to beat the, the team that's up there leading the way. 
Lovely offload there from Ashton Sims to Jake Emmett. Richard Whiting is out there now. A 33-year-old made his name at Hull, who play tomorrow. This is O'Brien. O'Brien gets the pass away, but to the wrong colour jersey. Oh, well done to lose. Great defensive set. And again, when they were split on the last tackle, didn't panic. There wasn't a mad rush to the ball. Players kept the, the discipline defensively, spatially as well, and it's paid off for them. You want to see that man with a with an open field, don't you, Corella? Okay. Played for Italy against Australia, scored a fabulous try. The fullback. Three. Good good playing for France. Oh, France, sorry. In Australia, yeah, in Australia, sorry. This is Bentley again. Has the ball there to Buzinac. Here is Ford. Nice soft hands again. Here it goes, Corella. Flick pass out the back. Boyer picks it up. Five. And a good job for Toronto that Hopkins was there, but they're coming forward again here with Bentley. Bentley, oh, it's a slack pass. The Planos keeps it going miraculously. A miracle pass. But uh, Chris Centrone caught in possession on tackle number five. Turnover. Well, just chanting their arm there. Yeah, they don't get the try. Look at this. Corella, when he goes through, he's looking for options. Nice inside ball as well. To Boyer. Let's see what they're like in this set of six here. Well, they don't get the desired result, but the start of the right end of the field, and you look at the clock, there's still a quarter of this game to go. Another try for Toulouse in this sequence. Toulouse score next. They're getting a real sniff at this. It's important that Toulouse, uh, that Toronto do really well, and they are doing through Russell. Great break. Look at this from Matty Russell. That's good feet, good run from Russell. Quick play the ball as well. Bezik then gets it to Briley. Briley up and over the top forward. Surely a forward pass to Chase Stanley. Referee's going to give it. Sure, from up here, that looked like it drifted forward. What say you? Uh, it looked like it did, didn't it? It went from one side of the line to the other, which is uh, a bit of a giveaway. But uh, not given by the officials, and the tries awarded in the corner. Well, Chase Stanley won't be uh, arguing. Uh, Toronto maybe have had the gift of two tries, but look at this from Matty Russell. Well, That's why they paid the big money for him. Well, he's hard to stop, isn't he, Matty Russell? Every time he carries the ball, he's very difficult. And there's the ball from Ryan Briley to Chase Stanley. When he throws that ball, I'm with you, I think it does drift forward. A man whose career's been hindered by some injuries, Chase Stanley. Fabulous player. Well, it's three metres. Yeah. It started on the one side of the line and it went straight over the top of the whitewash. So the second half, Eddie, they've had a couple of things that have gone against them, haven't they? They play smart off the back of instruction play. We're fucking winning the game. Conceded two tries. Uh, one from Kerr and that one from Chase Stanley. It could be a possible. Stuart, I'm being screamed at. That was the momentum rule. Oh, well, I would have said it came out of his hands. It did travel forward, came out of his, his hands forward and cross that line. What was that that Nathan Brown said a couple of years ago? If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks <laughs> like a duck, probably is a duck. That wasn't a duck, though. No, that was a forward pass. That's a very good point, that should but you get my point, <laughs> don't you? Stanley three and five in the championship now, three in his last five for Chase Stanley. Well, one was dropped, one that was a forward pass. Toronto will be thanking their lucky stars tonight and they will be quacking all the way home <laughs> the uh, the conversion is missed 36 18 well the try stands and Ryan Briley's pass he's not able to add the extra two but it's the ball here this is the one that's that's controversial but yeah I think on balance Toronto They've had the fair share of luck, haven't they? But they've had the skill as well to go with it. I think sometimes you create your own luck, don't you? If you look like the dominant team that's, that's doing what you want, probably you do get away with a few things. You do. And, of course, video referee or not, you can't go looking for forward passes. I think the most important point from this is that they've got... They've got some real quality players of Toronto. They're, they're, they're making big statements out there across the leagues. 
signings, rumoured signings, the work on the short side oh, again. Oh, he goes again now, Liam Kane. he's got support with him from Bezik, and Bezik has support with him from McCrone, and Bezik should have passed to McCrone, he would have been over the line. Now he has got it. McCrone into centre field, they've got men on the overlap wide, has O'Brien gone the wrong way again? Coming back into centre field, this is Hopkins, trying to muscle his way to the line. They just hold him up, no one there at dummy half, O'Brien in quickly, Briley goes for a one-pointer, ah, oh, hits the post and goes over. How fortunate is that? What did I say, when looks going for you, well, got to fall Brian. Oh, Ryan Briley, sorry, look at that, slices it, hits the crossbar, and then straight between the uprights. Well, that's your second piece of magic, isn't it? There was no way that that was ever going over. That is the scruffiest drop goal I've ever seen. He's under right, pressure yeah, as well, oh, though. Yeah. Well, still counts, still one point, no matter how untidy it looks. I think the point we were making, Ed, before the break, and once again, by the way, on the short side, something that Toronto have exploited so well this half is they've got some really good ball players, some really accomplished players in attack, able to defend as well. Short kickoff, yeah, a little diffused. Yeah, a little bit of cheekiness from uh, Corrala that never came off. It was a short kick-off, he went for the, uh, the kick himself. Well, they need the ball, don't they, as soon as possible. And you look at the scoreline, you think that they've been absolutely blown away to lose, but it's only in the last 15 minutes that they seem to have really been dominant in this game. Emmett will play the ball on halfway. Well, the confidence is up now. Here is O'Brien. O'Brien cuts back inside, gets the, the pass away. Is that Sidlow? Yes, it is. O'Brien, oh, they've got men on. Oh, but they've lost the momentum. Whiting put it down, but Worthington picked it up and the ball went backwards. Here is O'Brien again, slides the kick in. The chasers are after this. The bounce is horrible, but they get a repeat set. When you look at a Paul Rowley coach side, you always see the... When they have got the ball, the close support, the night, it's not always about the, the big play to the winger. Oh, they've scored a couple of tries like that in this game. It's about the man pushing up, supporting the, the man who's carrying the ball. They get the kick, they get another set of six. It's all about building pressure. Can't really do anything about that then. Quite difficult for Adair to get that ball and then get back in the field to play. Well, uh, Ryan Briley needed to be about eight foot six tall to get that ball the way it bounced. But uh, it's a lovely firm pitch, it's a beautiful weather, it's what summer rugby league is all about today. I don't think Richard Whiting fancied that, but he's broken through and he's taking on the foot. Oh, he's waltzed through him, but good defending back from Bartow. Bezik quickly in a dummy half, short ball, <laughs> Sam Hopkins, good try. Good try from Toulouse, they're walking away with this now. Eddie, from the drop-off, Sam Hopkins, he was the man who caught the ball and then tipped it onto a play, and all of a sudden it was a, an attacking set for them. Throwing the ball around, Whiting, when he gets the ball, he goes through, gets rid of a couple of Toulouse defenders. And this is what I'm talking about, Eddie, what's it like on the next play? Who's pushing up with the man who's carrying the ball? Nice little interchange, nice little tip-on, and a committed run from Hopkins. When he comes crashing onto the ball, difficult man to stop between two players, more or less impossible for Toulouse. Yeah, it's a great, great finish. End of the play, Toronto past the 40-point mark, and the crowd, which I've said at this stage in, on day one, is, is, is bigger and more vocal than I've ever seen before, and I think maybe in part because of this, this cute curiosity from a, a neutral's point of view of just what Toronto are like to watch in the flesh. And they've proved a good example with it there. Past the 40 point mark and looking very impressive. Indeed, 41 18, kick to come. It'll be 43 18 in a moment. Toronto certainly making a statement here today in the Betfred Championship. And of course, back home in Toronto, remember that it's a sporting mad city. The baseball, they have the Blue Jays and the Maple Leafs. The basketball, they've got the Raptors. The hockey, got the Maple Leafs. They've even got a team called the Bradford Bulls. In Toronto, they play junior ice hockey based in the city. But Paul Rowley telling me this week that uh, each and every one of their remaining home games will be sold out, and fans come seven hours in the car to come to 
Lamport Stadium and watch them. Well, if they carry on putting on displays like this, which has been a lot more accomplished in the second half, then they're getting value for money, aren't they? They're certainly giving value for money here. They're leaving 43 points to 18. And back in possession once again. Strong run from Sidlow. That's McCrone who gives it to Richard Whiting. Two spells at home, 258 appearances. Wonder if he's staying over to see his former teammates play Rovers tomorrow. Andrew Dixon now. I don't think they finished there as well, Toronto. You no, can they've see got lots of time. Get, yeah, they're all getting excited. You can see the amount of players that are pointing up and talking to the teammates. They know that when they've got the ball, they, they can cause some problems. Oops. Loose pass. But they get it back. There was an air shot there. One. Tackle one. Time off. And... Uh, Josh he's hurt, he's yeah. McCrone. He just gets his legs caught underneath the man who's making the tackle, Josh McCrone. Getting bent backwards, just trying to walk it off, make sure that everything's yeah, OK, right everything's intact. Wait there, Josh. See the defender Please, just goes over the top Andrew. of him, pulls him back down. It was Marguerite, oh. made initial contact. I think that's a tackle that the uh, yeah, mass yeah. review panel might be interested in. So he sort of loses his legs and jumps into the tackle. Which lands on the back of his, uh, his legs, so could hear a bit more about that one. Blake Wallace will play the ball there to Bezik. Here again is Sidlo. I think they have uh, 50 points in their sights here, do Toronto. It'll be a little bit harsh on Toulouse, to be fair. They've uh, played full part in this match so far. There is uh, Briley again. Just hits the ball to that right hand side. That's knocked on. Adair picks it up. No advantage, so they'll bring it back. It'll be the turnover on the last. Well, the first reaction from Corey Patton turned around to his teammates said, come on, lads, another set of six here. Ten metres from the line, there's only one way, really, they're going to go, and that's infield, so we can get tight. Good run from the wing, James Worthington, to get through the line then. Had to be a brave caddy for the 18-year-old. Puesh will take the ball forward. Plays it there to Briash, and that's a good ball from Ford. Here goes Reese Curran again. Oh, lovely dummy. Gets the pass away scruffily, and that's a shame. Well, there's a little knock on, I think. Little knock on by Matty Russell. They might get the, the verdict here. Or was that a forward pass anyway? It's yeah, forward pass anyway, head and feet to Toronto. Good line from Curran back against the grain. He tries to get the, the ball around the Toronto player to his teammate. I think he's shown glimpses. He's current. Every time he's got the ball over on that left-hand side, whenever him and Jonathan Ford link up, he comes and hits a really good line back against the angle. That's been the thing that's caused defences, uh, caused Toronto's defence issues. Uh, by the way, we're running the uh, vote for the uh, man of the match, the Betfred man of the match on your Our League app. You can vote now on all your mobile devices, provided you have uh, downloaded the site, Our League, the Our League app. And uh, we can reveal that the legend picking this one is no one other than Chris Radlinski. We're outing you, Chris, today. Chris Radlinski of Wigan has picked the four names for the Betfred man of the match, and we'll give you the four names in a moment. So is Chris the one of the ones who's been picking the man of the match over the recent months, then? No comment. No comment. Hopkins coming forward again. out down the right hand side not only did he come up with the with the big players throughout this game i think when you look at what the likes of macron and briley have done they do take control the game management from them to kick the ball out knowing when they need to just sit back just take some time in make sure that they focus on what they've got to do I mean, a big defensive set here and you look at the toulouse's body language and the they look out on the feet, the Everyone, second half, it's Mitchell absolutely Biden, got away from Adam, them. Corey, wait there, Rolse. Oh, 
counter. Toulouse trying to work the ball away from their own half with Maxime Pouesh. Well, the names for the Man of the Match vote, four of them. Bob Bezik of Toronto, Liam Kay, who scored the hat-trick, or did he? Uh, Matthew Russell, those three all of Toronto, and Jonathan Ford of Toulouse. So make your mind up right now. Bezik, Kay, or Russell of Toronto, or Ford of Toulouse. Vote now on the Our League app, and you have got around about six and a half minutes left to change the course of history here. Five. Boyer oh, yeah, now still not giving this game up. Some piece of magic here from Jonathan Ford, who's on the ball now. Oh, and he gives the ball away in the end. He was under pressure, to be fair. Well, Toronto seem to be not only attacking when they've got the ball, but also in defence as well. They're getting it right, very clinical. Whenever they make a decision to go in and try and jam a player who's carrying the ball, they nail him. Well, Blackpool today, uh, Blackpool next week, Newcastle today for these two sides in the summer bash. And there will be a five-point gap opened up at the end of this between Toronto and Toulouse. And a golden opportunity now for London Broncos tomorrow to sneak into second place in the Betfred Championship table. Hopkins again for the Wolfpack. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Bezik, tip on pass. Dixon, he's already got one, of course, in the first half. Bezik, Bezik then to Sidlow. Back it comes from Bezik. Nice run again from Blake Wallace. So close. Last tackle coming up here. Whiting and Briley with a kick to the in goal area. Oh, and it's not dealt with. In fact, there's a right collision there, and Worthington pulls away. They're both on the haunches, those two players, well, Ford a, and Worthington. That's the breakdown in communication, isn't it? So it should always be a dominant call. You would have thought it would have come from the winger. To be fair to Worthington, he's only been there for two that's the, this, And this is the, the, I guess, in mitigation for him. Jonathan Ford's a, a very dominant, experienced player. But he'll learn from that one with Worthington. He's the one with the clearest view. He's the one with the clearest line to the ball. And that should be the, the, the dominant call. It was a shallow goal line dropout. Toronto have it back 20 metres away from the Toulouse line. Here comes Hopkins. 12 metres out. We'll play the ball here to Bezik. Down the right-hand side, Briley. Briley then, and this is Patterson. Patterson releases the pass, but Matty Russell couldn't take the ball in, flicks off his fingertips and goes out head and feet at the scrum here to Toulouse. Well, well done, young James Worthington. He was the one who got caught up with Ford again, who's the man in the tackle. And he brings down a bigger, more powerful man. He doesn't let go of him, forcing him into making the mistake. He was looking to get the ball on the inside to Corey Patterson. That's what you want from a youngster. 18 years of age, you come up with an eddy, you get straight back into the action, and you come up with a positive contribution like you did then. Heads in. See what they've got now here, bringing the ball away. Bit of a dummy then, and Jonathan Ford trying to get his side a penalty. Well, he's one of the four contenders for the man of the match, but uh, at the moment, a hat trick hero from Toronto, Liam Kay is winning it with more than uh, twice as many votes as everybody else. It looks like he's going to go home with two very valuable championship points. It's been the field position that Toronto have had in this second half. They really okay. struggle for meters to get down into any good areas to attack. That's why Jonathan Ford, he, he stood up well in that oh. first half. A lot of the key players were coming oh. from him. The second half probably not had the, the foundations to play off. Bentley in centre field. Here is Ford again, trying to skip around a couple. Legs come up, that's Ooh. a penalty. That's a bad one, that. You can see that the way that he ended up, Jonathan Ford, he rolls over. Oof, and right down on the top of his head as well. And he tries to to roll through okay, the tackle that? when he, he realised what position he was going in. What's the, what's the criteria here, uh, 
Stewart. Well, it's, it's obviously a dangerous tackle. The referee and touch judges will be considering whether they're going to take any further action. I think it'll be uh, Bezik that's uh, the one in trouble here. He, he lifted and he also applied pressure when he was in that dangerous position. Bob! Well, that's good to see he's, he's up. He's back on his feet. Bob, come here. And the Bob Bezik being man. called by okay. the referee. And he goes to the sin bin and he immediately goes to Jonathan Ford and apologizes. That's lovely to see. Well, that, that's yet. straight away. That's the, the mark of the man in the sport as well. You know, when you, you go into a tackle, you get a couple of things wrong. And Bob Bezik is not a dirty player. No. He knew straight away that as soon as he'd lifted him up, and Jonathan Ford tried to, to roll through the tackle as well when he tried to, to duck his head in as well to try and come out of it on the, the better side and not get hurt. But thankfully, he's okay. Well, the good thing from Bezik's point of view is that he can get first use of the showers. Mind you, there won't be any lack of hot water. This is a Premier League football ground, St James's Park. One. Move on, him. Well, you never know by oh. game four, Eddie. <laughs> when the curtain comes down, they could be called then. I doubt it. Ford, okay. nice little tip over the top. Here's Corella back on the inside. It goes to Reese Curran. And Toulouse get over for possibly, possibly the last try of the match. Maybe pure consolation, but an indication of what they can do against a tired defence. No, it's great work from Ford. Recently on the deck, nursing the neck. He's got that long, long arm release, and it's current on the inside. I think he deserves a try. Another good line from him. Really well played from the back rower. No time wasted, adding the extra two as well from Corella. I think the game's done, Eddie, isn't it? But it's nice to see that there's some creativity and attack there, and nice to see Jonathan Ford back on his feet and contributing. But for the second time this season, Toulouse scored 20-plus points against Toronto, end up on the losing side. Yeah, well, Curran Ford and um, Corella, I think they've been very good over on that left-hand side. Just unfortunately for them, they've not had enough ball, they've not had enough position, but they certainly are a side that'll give it a give it a crack in those qualifying eights and I'm sure some of the Super League sides at the bottom end of the, the table are looking at both of these sides thinking yeah well do you know what we've got to make sure that we're, we're on in when we play against those there's some very very good players well five of the six teams involved in the uh, Magic Weekend tomorrow teams at the wrong end of the table or slipping possibly towards trouble so uh, yes I'm sure they'll be looking at this realising that uh, Toronto come the qualifiers will pose a few problems here and there. And what you've got, Eddie, when you meet those teams from the championship, you, you're meeting teams that are used to winning. Whereas in Super League, you're at the bottom of the table because you've been losing more than you've been winning. So the confidence in one group against the lack of confidence in another group. I'm looking forward to the Summer Bash next week. It's Lee and Toronto. It'll be a return to uh, play against his former club for Paul Rowley, which will no doubt add a little bit of spice to the event. Toronto versus Lee finishes up the Saturday night programme next week at Blackpool here. This is the opening match of the Thatcher Magic Weekend in the Super League. And it's the Super League that takes centre stage immediately after that. How about that from Jonathan Ford? Oh, what a shame. They put the ball down. Carella was on his way to the line, but it was invention from Jonathan Ford. Look at that. Well, the game's gone, and that's what he's got in his kit bag, isn't it? A lot of people say chips over the top never, never work. Well... They, they nearly did that. They nearly did. I suppose they still don't. <laughs> 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 it's all point proven, really. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what you're saying. Fair play, yeah. They're all right, the people who say that, the spot on. But you, you like that. You like a player <laughs> that, that backs his own ability. If he sees something, he's got to go with it. And then if he doesn't come off, he's got to explain himself to the coach and his teammates. But what with the scoreline like it is, absolutely go for it. Throw everything at Toronto. Don't die wondering. Last couple of minutes. And the noise levels ramping up inside St James's Park because it's uh, Witness Saints that follows this from the Betfred Super League. First match of the Super League Magic Weekend. Toronto. That's coming up next. Witness Saints. Toronto. Maybe ending up with uh, the ball in hand and maybe some more reward because here goes Liam Kay again. 
looking for his fourth try. Marion in there very, very quickly, along with Marguerite. He just thought he spotted something then, Liam Kerr. Just a bit of looseness behind the back of the rope. Three, move back, Sam! OK, now. Wallace again spins out of one challenge. Four, just couldn't get the, the pass away. Matty Russell looking at getting involved. There he goes now. Difficult man to handle. Five, yes, he move is. Back, very low centre of gravity. I had a favour at Warrington this year, but uh, he hopes heading back to the Super League next year with Ryan Briley and the rest of the Toronto oh, Wolfpack. Be a as you said, all the way through the match, it'll be a fascinating qualifying competition at the end of this season. I can't wait to watch it. So it was a turn up here, the Magic Weekend, they're really looking forward to seeing what these both of these sides have got, and a number of fans as well have turned in to watch this fixture. Seeing what Toronto and Toulouse, all the, the noise is all about. Well, Toronto will end up with 25 what? points, Toulouse 20. Uh, Toulouse points difference, though, is 284. And uh, now I can name that uh, Liam Kay is the Betfred Championship man of the match here at St James's Park today. He has uh, got an overwhelming vote that's gone in his favour. Two and a half tries he scored, but he'll claim the hat trick. But the other side of the ball as well, not only for scoring those tries, but what he's done backfield as well. He showed up well. Nice ball, here is uh, Marguerite. Five, and uh, Toronto, two. although they're winning this with ease in the last minute, they don't want to give anything else away, but they've just given a penalty away again. And that is the one cause of concern, I think, for Paul Rowley. The fact that the penalty count seems to me week on week goes against them. Well, the likes of that penalty, that was because they were just trying to slow it down because they've been broken. 11-5 it is at the moment. Hopefully that will be the last one of the match. I think some of the other penalties that they've been giving away is the ill-disciplined ones, the sloppy ones that you, you can't really accept. This is Boyer again. Last 30 seconds of the match. Can Toulouse leave Newcastle with something to think about? Boyer gets the ball away to Jonathan Ford. Yes, they can! Tremendous try from Jonathan Ford. OK, Toronto may be a little tired, knowing that the game is won. Perhaps, perhaps guilty of putting the cue on the rack, but that was quality from Toulouse. And I tell you what, if they get in the, uh, the qualifiers, they'll be a threat as well. Well, the last ten minutes, because the scoreboard was against them, they've absolutely just gone out there and played rugby. Jonathan Ford, he scores a try, and I think he has been brilliant in this game. I think all the teams now who are going to be looking at the qualifying eights will be looking at Jonathan Ford and the likes of Corella. They're two men that they need to stop. No how to set tries up, no how to score tries. Good showing from that man in Newcastle. Well, 43-28, 43-30. If this ball goes over, And indeed it does, so 43 Toronto, 32 to lose. That's the way it's finished up. Toronto march on at the top of the table, but to lose, showing late on in this match that they have something as well in the locker when we get to the end of season qualifiers. Entertaining game to kick off this magic weekend. And not from the Super League, but from the Betfred Championship on this occasion. Really, really good. So there we are. That's game one of seven done and dusted at the start of this Magic Weekend. And the final score here, Toronto 43, Toulouse 30. Yes, thanks very much, Eddie. Toronto extending a four-point half-time lead to win out 43-30, as Eddie has said, in the end. Well, it's uh, an action-packed game. Uh, Bob Bezik in the Sinbin Toronto.